Okay. I'll work out. I didn't know. <laughs> uh, you can see my screen, right? Yep. Awesome. Uh, I want to improve my base mechanics, probably my strafing, and my positioning. Hey, well, that's literally what I specialize in. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, did, you, did you get the option to fill out the questions as well, by the way? No. Uh, Perfect. what questions? Okay. I don't know. This is... Metify is literally driving me insane. It, the app does not work out the time. It's like I'm actually uh -oh. losing it. <laughs> um, there's typically... Yeah. Uh, there's, three, there's three questions. Just, uh, just, 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 yeah. Just, yeah, send me a link to your screenshot. Or give me a screenshot with your lifetime stats. If you could do that real quick, I'd appreciate it. Just hop in game and then just screenshot your like stats pitch. Yeah. Um, I got then, those questions and I filled those in. Filled them in, but I just can't see them. Maybe. Great. But I will grab a new screenshot then. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry about that. The website pulls my hair pulls my hair out. Yeah. Um, I was like when I was trying to book the session, it kept putting me into other people's even though I clicked your name question mark? on the front page. It was question, super question, weird. Question mark? <laughs> yeah. I was like, huh? <laughs> Great. This is awesome. the wrong person. Awesome, great. Um, and then, is there anything I should be aware of before we start the session? Anything? Do you feel anything out there for that question? Um, I think I just wrote that Apex is my first FPS game. Okay. That I really played. Okay. Started in season nine. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh okay, yeah. So Apex is your first FPS game. Um. How many hours do you have in it? Uh, one point two. Point two. Uh, do you aim train at all or anything like that? Yeah, I'm um, flat in or flat complete. Flat complete. In nice. take. You're better than me. <laughs> I am flat with a couple diamond scores. Got it. Okay, here we go. Um. All right. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start off and saying you have. Really fucking good stats for it being your FP your, your first FPS and only a thousand hours in. I'll say that right now. You. you have really solid KD. Uh, I mean, you have a 4K highest skill is 15. Uh, not bad at all. Uh, do you mostly play pubs or ranked, or is it like both or what? Uh, I used to play ranked before, but then the changes and I haven't really played in a few seasons. Okay, yeah, I don't really blame. You. Yeah, so mostly pubs nowadays. Okay, that that makes sense with your KD and everything. Um. Yeah, damn. I'm actually kind of impressed by how good, uh, like how good your stats are on paper for how how little you've played. You have better Thank stats you. than I did when I played, over at like that like 1.6k hour mark or whatever. Um, yeah, I think aim training really helped because I was like under 1kd before I started aim training, and then it jumped up <laughs> a bit. <laughs> Let's go, someone that utilizes aim training effectively. That'll be yeah. Love to see it. There's too many players that I know that are like voltaic, like grandmaster, and then they don't know how to play the game, and I'm like, man. <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah, you really gotta mix and match and figure out like, oh, this is how I shoot on a Horizon Bolt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, like, there's just nothing that replaces playing the game. Obviously, you should aim train it, and I aim train a lot, and I aim train a good bit, and like, you should still do it. But it cannot be the only thing you do. You cannot aim train for more than you play the game. It should be like, yeah, <laughs> it should be like a ratio. It should be like one hour, four hours for every hour of aim training. It's like four hours of gameplay. Um. So you were looking for base mechanics. Uh, you're straight from you're straight from micro positioning. Uh, yeah. since you, since Apex is your first FPS and you only have a couple, and you have like a thousand hours in it, right? Uh, yeah. you probably are missing out on some fundamentals, and I, and I don't mean that to say as in like a player, you are probably, I mean, I've coached players that have thousands of hours in this game and are missing basic fundamentals of the game. Yeah, uh, so you're and probably, that's kind of why I booked the session. <laughs> yeah. Because I was like, I probably have had the... <laughs> yeah. I'm really big on fundamentals. You're probably missing some, if, if not FPS fundamentals, probably like Battle mm -hmm. Royale fundamentals. Yeah. Um, you've uh, dropped a 4K before. Have you only dropped one 4K? Only one. Only one? And on Wraith. On Wraith? Okay. Uh, when, when was that? Season 13 or 14, I think. Okay, so, so it's been a minute. Yeah. Uh, I I do usually drop at least a 3K every season since then. Okay. But I haven't uh, gotten too close at 4K since. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about that especially as well. And I and I, I assume I assume you want a twenty. Based on yeah. your, based on your stats alone, I'd say you are within range for one. You'd have to get a really lucky game. Mm -hmm. Um but we can also eliminate a lot of the luck and talk about some of the stuff that goes into it and all that. 
Um, but yeah. Uh, do you have any questions before we get started? I'm just gonna, let me just rip your VOD and take a look at it. It's an hour of raw gameplay, right? Yeah. Uh, is, there, is there any game in particular you feel like is the best, or is it just, let's all just mm -hmm. dive in? I think the first game is a trio, and after that it's mostly duos with another trio, I think. Okay. Yeah, duo knows Phil for the rest, I think. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. We will just dive in. Um... What sense are you playing game? Uh, eight hundred one point six, I think. It looks a little fast. That's really fine. I mean, I'm not gonna buy like it's too fast. Like it literally looks fine. Hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you. I could sit here and go like, oh, blah, 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 you did this wrong, but like, I'm not gonna lie to you, you did just get wingman headshot off rip. You got hit for 86 here. You did yeah. just, you did just kind of implode. I could obviously critique like some of the smaller, like really small stuff here. I'm gonna skip over it. Cause I don't think you, I don't think it's that important. You did just get wingman fucking headshot. That gun is so stupid. <laughs> that gun yeah, makes it's me a little mind. silly. <laughs> it's a little silly. I love that player was not aiming for your head. I'll tell you that right now. Your pl that player was definitely not trying to go for a headshot. That was all luck on that guy's behalf. Okay. Nice. Very good. Yeah, I can tell the aim is definitely not going to be your problem. You uh, you are hitting pretty pretty decent shots here. This guy, mm -hmm. wait, can you ashport up here? You can. Apparently. <laughs> I thought you couldn't because it's oob, but I guess not. I guess the very front is not oob. So you're just looking for this guy. Yeah, he disappeared. <laughs> okay. Then not a super interesting beginning, but your teammate was jump master and dropped like at the last like the last possible time. You rotate and loot really quickly, though. I like how fast you are already out of here. Um, which is really surprising. I'm not gonna lie. Most players, especially for your time, like, like, period, typically don't, like, like, there's, like, there's a lot of really slow looting. They want to like, amalgamate everything. But you have a gun and ammo, and you're out. Like, you're good. Yeah, I like used to be like pretty bad uh, loot goblin. <laughs> and then I tried to work very specifically on not being too bad at it. Oh, that's good. Looting some more, which is fine. On the way. Break around, looking around. This is I mean I, I conceptually I like I like what I see right now. This is actually really this is actually really good. Um Yeah, we had two teams fighting and then we approach. Mostly for these mechanics coaching sessions, I just look at your fights and just and just, like just the raw fighting. I typically skip a lot of the uh, other stuff. Mm -hmm. The these teams are. What are these guys doing? I don't know. Burn kill. Okay. These are not okay. I love it when kills are just handed to me. It feels nice, man. <laughs> yep. Um, so have you watched any of my, uh, sessions before or any of my coaching before? Yeah. Uh, I watched quite a few. Have you, uh, so you, so I assume by watching my sessions, you know what mirroring anti mirroring is, right? Yeah. Um, here, this is, it's a really small thing here. Uh, you should anti me this guy, 100% here. I know the box is to your left here, but you can still diagonally, uh, anti me this guy. Like this, mm -hmm. so you walk closer to him because he's not looking at you. You don't have to worry about walking closer to him. Uh, and he's wandering this way. If you anti mirror him here, you might get like one to three shots extra off. But I won't kill him. It's a really small thing, like I said. But if someone is at an angle like this and they're running like to cover like this, if you anti mirror mm -hmm. them, you, you you will establish the angle for longer. Really, really good thing to learn. Really good thing to um, kind of 
build habitually. Uh, you are you arguably could mirror this guy instead if you wanted to as well. Like just follow him mm -hmm. to the right here. Uh, but typically ancient mirroring here lets it'll let you step up the cover here, uh, and it'll let you see the guy for longer, which is typically more valuable than just mirroring, which will get you the same results just about assuming you have precision and smoothness. This guy is shooting back at you for some reason. I think it's the teammate that's shooting at me. Then climb up, kill this guy. I'm gonna swap here. Reload. That guy really see these players are very questionable. I'll say that. The pub, you know, but still. Yeah. I don't know how to aim with the massive. It's hard. <laughs> this guy was hit. This guy's. This guy's strafes were so. Yeah. Uh, unironically aiming with the mastiff. I think I. I don't know how to aim with the gun either. I think it's probably better. I, I legitimately think it's better to not ADS with that gun. I swear to God. I know it chokes the spread, but like yeah. it throws my aim off so bad with it. Yeah, I've heard some people just. Double click both left and right click instead of ADSing full time. But... Maybe yeah. I use toggle ADS a lot, so that, that won't work for me. Ah. Yeah, you did get a shit ton of free kills here because they just were like fighting the other team, and these players did not really uh, fight you guys. You had really good utility usage. You had really good positioning here, and you pushed. You know. Good timing. Mm -hmm. It was. It was fine. These players were not really a challenge here. Probably yeah. gonna just skip some more here. Oh, let me see here. Good mirror. Crispy ass aim. I like it. That was that was. The mirror was risky, but you didn't get punished for it, so you just kept doing it. That was really good. As soon as, and as soon as they started shooting back at you, you stopped straight aiming them. Like, literally, this is exactly how you should be doing this. Like, mm -hmm. literally perfect here. That's, like, mm -hmm. just textbook. Very nice. I can tell. I can tell you watch my- I can tell you watch my sessions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, trying to, especially with Mirror and Edge Mirror, trying mm -hmm. to, like, figure that out. It's yeah, This team is super weird. <laughs> what the- what the hell? <laughs> what the hell is yeah, this? <laughs> Uh, just three people sitting there. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Alright, well here's what you do. You horizon ult them and then fucking kill them. Yeah, and this was my first week playing horizon. Like, the second day. So I wasn't uh, too good at using the ult yet. <sighs> <laughs> Establishes the, the, the most common angle known to man. Is unaware. Or just walk through that. Yeah. These players are like... Awful. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you I, double take I that don't... and be like, wait. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, I don't have Octane. <laughs> <laughs> double take here was so funny. Holy shit. I, I, I want to watch that again. Not for any coaching value, just because it's fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Game, this game, you are not challenged at all. This game, you were just running around shooting people, it's fine. Yeah. And then this is no-field duos, right? You said? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Probably a lot more. What the hell? This guy's a fort. <laughs> He's got the loot. Okay. Well, there has to be an armor swap here, right? Surely. You don't need to worry about Thirsty Sky. Thirsty Sky actually is really dangerous, I'm not gonna lie to you. I have no idea where his teammate's at. Thirsty Demon's really neat. I would just go for armor swap on one of the boxes. There has to be at least one armor swap on one of those boxes somewhere. If this teammate yeah. was not... This guy does not know what he's doing. Holy... That guy... That... Smokey. Come on, man. Yeah. Uh... Typically, uh... Don't prioritize thirsting. Like, like the, in, in no fill, obviously, it's very good to thirst your kills because it's mm -hmm. really hard to recover if they res. But if his teammate's nowhere nearby, literally, just don't worry about uh, thirsting. You can just focus on resetting because you get caught out thirsting. You will get yeah. fucked by it really badly. Like, it, like it will just kill you. Right? So especially because we're playing no fill, we have no chance of recovering from something like that. Mm -hmm. 
right? Because we can we, we, we can just die straight up, and that's it. That's it. That's it. That's the end of our game. Here you're usually doing. Fine. What the fuck is this guy doing? What pubs are you in? Like, get, get me in these lobbies. Holy <laughs> shit. Uh, here. Uh, yeah. conceptually, what you do is fine. It is not like you did something inherently bad, but there's just something better to do here. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. you are thinking of strafe too linearly. I mean, at least what I can tell in this situation. Uh, I didn't really be able to tell in other situations because last game was against actual AI, but this game. Um, the important thing here, especially when it comes to strafe, uh, I have students. Uh, do you LG do at all? Do you play like Diabolical or uh, like Quake Live or anything like that? No, no. I play a bit of R five Reloaded. But R five? No. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, that, yeah, that's fine. Um, this is a, this is a habit that typically comes from students that uh play like games like, like that to focus on strafe. Um, the important thing specifically to work on here, um, strafing. So you've watched my session, so you probably know about this little graph I'm going to show you here. It shows mm -hmm. the overhead. Uh, this. Uh, this. And this is the opponent's FOV, right? I'm sure you've seen this before, especially you watch like my yeah. session. session. Um, obviously, a lot of what we talk about is uh, strife that's bound to this in, in some way. Like, we draw the axis for you and the opponent. Draw your... Uh, should be like this. And then it should be like this, right? Uh, but strafe doesn't. Strafe is not always bound to the confines of walking straight lines against each other. In fact, this is actually really bad to do. Uh, there's a couple of things we want to focus on. This is more advanced strafe fundamentals that we want to cover. Uh, things mm -hmm. that are important for us to know. Obviously, this is how we engage mirroring. Anti mirroring. You seem to have a, a good enough understanding of these concepts to be able to do really well. Um, when I tell my students all the time to simply just go strafing people, aka mirror and mirror them, uh, I, I typically tell them just, to just go do it because they need to feel, they need to know how it feels. They need to physically understand how it feels to do so in a game. Um, hmm. And you have surpassed that point. You've gotten to the point where you do know what it feels like. Especially I can tell from you from your gameplay that you have done so a good bit. Um, so we need to remember specifically the three rules of when to engage in strafing, which is uh, how to kill advantage through weapons. So gun diff, right? Uh, mm -hmm. like, R, like, you know, R9 versus, like, Vol, R9 versus Sentinel, blah, 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 blah. Um, HP value. So if you crack somebody, you just strafe him them. If you have better armor than them, you just strafe him them, things like that. And then the other idea is shooting first, right? Um, are these, are these concepts f f f uh, familiar to you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you will, you will go in fights, especially in no-fill. You should not do this. You should especially not go into fights just going to strafe him people. Obviously, uh, there is times where you should. But uh, everything I say is not a 100% always do X or Y. Because it's important to understand the logic behind it. If you, you'll see that, when I, that if I know Phil, or if I'm playing, if I'm running like 1v3, I will hmm. strafe aim people in a 1v3 because I want to kill that guy now, as soon as possible. Uh, if I have an isolated 1v1, I want to kill that guy immediately, right? That's the important yeah. thing to do. Um, but the more important thing to do is understand that if you strafe aim everybody, you are going to likely take a shit ton of damage. You have no idea what input people are on until it's too late most of the time. You don't yeah. know the guys on controller until they're on your box standing still. And you don't know some guys on MNK until you mirror them and take 190 damage. You're like, oh, okay. Um, hmm. You never want to really initiate fights straight faming unless you have to, right? Unless you need to kill a guy immediately, okay? We want to make sure that we remember these three rules. And let's elaborate on rule three. Shoot first, okay? Uh, hmm. The important thing to understand is that if we have a movement ax axes like this, our whole goal is to escape uh, this, view, this view cone. We want to escape this view cone. The number one way we escape this view cone is by really wide strafes. Um, we can do fakes like this, we can go back like this, and then their view cone will be lagging behind us, they'll be under aiming us. Uh, the important thing is that if we... We're going to define three ranges. Uh, we're going to define uh, close, medium, and uh, far, okay? Mm -hmm. Close is anywhere from like here, 
So like here, medium is anywhere from like here to here, and far is anything beyond this, right? Yeah. Um, close. Yeah, actually, if I do close, medium, far. Okay. Um, we also have the hybrids. Of, uh, we also have the hybrids of close, medium to medium, far. Here. Uh, these these are obviously just you know you, you know you can make an assumption about what those are. Um, yeah. The there are two things that are really important of here. They'll be very conscious of here in the close range. Uh, this the the, f the further away you are from somebody, the less likely it is that you're gonna move out of their view cone. If you're really far away from somebody, you are never escaping their view cone. You have to like use cover and things like that, right? If someone's mm -hmm. sniping you from like a mile away, you're never running fast enough to get to get off their screen. They will just move their screen, right? However, if you're really close to somebody, you actually have a, li a high likelihood of breaking their uh, their FOV. Maybe you'd be able to get, escape their view cone, right? Um, and this is really important to understand. Um, the other thing, the other thing that's really important to understand is that there is a range of death. You're going to call this the death range because you die if you're in this range against a controller player. And that range looks something like this. It basically encapsulates the whole close medium range, and this is the aim assist range. Uh, this is where aim assist is at its strongest. If you, uh, if you, want, if you ever one of you want a controller player where you have the luxury mm -hmm. of doing so, like when your friend is on controller or you meet somebody that's on controller and they're down to one of you want or something like that, uh, you should literally go and one of you on them and see how this feels. You will, you will be able to tell deliberately when some when, when a controller player can just kill you. Um, if you're close, you are if if you are in in this close range, you are way too close for them to be able to kill you. You move way too fast on their screen. You are way too mm -hmm. big. The aim assist doesn't really pull to you at all. Uh, if you're too far away, well, I really don't need to explain that one. Um, but this range oh. here, the close medium, is a perfect range for them to fucking kill you. You are the perfect size. You do not move fast enough. And you can't really escape the view cone too easily, right? Uh, this is the aim assist range. We want to try and avoid this range at all costs, even if it's disadvantageous for us. Mostly because, I mean, it's controller is very artificially buffed here, right? Um, hmm. So if we sit somewhere like here, like in the front here, uh, we obviously we, we can obviously just peel back diagonally like, like this, right? We can just get out or we can just strafe hard back like this, whatever you want to do, right? Um, however, if we are in the front here, taking space forward is obviously very dangerous. Taking, walking at somebody is really, really dangerous unless we coordinate with reloads, weapon fire rates, things like that. Um, but sometimes it's... Like the amount of damage you take by walking at somebody and then strafing to the side like this or something like that is way less than getting one clipped here, right? I mean, what's worse, take, well, I mean, what's worse dying or not dying? Like, not dying, obviously, right? Yeah. Um, does it make sense to you? Yeah. Um, I didn't realize about super close range with aim assist. Yeah. It, it, uh, literally, if you go watch a controller player uh, at all and you see somebody just get in their face, they can't do anything about it. Like, they literally cannot turn fast enough for it most of the time. Really good controller players will like strafe and back up and space you out properly. But if you yeah. keep up that strafe with them and you realize that that's their goal, you can just keep walking at them. Uh, I I wouldn't want a controller player like every other day to get better at the game. And every time mm -hmm. I get in, the, in in like this in this really close range against them, they try and run away, and I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no. I'm like hugging them. I'm like just hard hugging them. Like you're not getting away from me. I'm sticking to you, right? Um, and, yeah. and every time I find myself here, I literally just peel back super hard, and they're like, come on. I'm like, no, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not doing this to me. Um, but, uh, does this make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, the important thing with these ranges, the, the, so, the, yeah, this is all concept of spacing. The whole thing with spacing mm. is that we're not only looking to enable ourselves, enabling ourselves is the easy part. If I tell you my loadout's R9 PK, what range should I play in? Close. Close, 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 medium, medium, right? Because the R9 can work in medium. PK works yeah. a bit less, but, like, you know. This is our range, yeah. basically. We define our range as this. Now, if I tell you that I have R9 PK and the opponent has, like, like, like wingman, like, PK, what range should I play in? It's a little bit more complicated, right? There's not really a simple answer to do this, this or that, right? Enabling mm. yourself is the easy part. Disabling our opponent is the way harder part, okay? Uh, obviously, you can't go into every fight with the luxury of knowing what they have. You have to be very adaptive. Uh, I've, I've gone into fights where I will swing somebody, like, uh, I will go into fights where I jump somebody like this. I get PK pump for 90 and go, oh, goodbye. Skedaddle. I'm leaving. Goodbye. I'm leaving. And I just hard peel back and then it's like 20, 20, 20. And I'm like, yep, nope, die. Right. Um, 
you have to be very reflexive and understand that and especially since you especially since you have what looks to be some pretty solid uh target reading skills and under, and you get like overall pretty solid skills in general i recommend this is something you, you focus on uh mm -hmm. you can when you're taking space there's two ways to really do it there's you can either do it uh all at once all at once or uh piece by piece okay um what I mean by all at once is you do like a slide into them, you do like sprinting, you like like a wall bounce into them, you sprint mm. into them, you just you just like that, right? Where you just go, I don't care, running at you, die, all right? Or uh, you do it piece by piece, where you go, all right, uh, straight thing to the left here, forward a little bit, or left, or I guess to the left now, forward to the right a little bit, up forward to the right, left like this, right, like piece by piece. Uh, this isn't always a viable option. This is typically the option you'll come across more often. Is all at once. But uh, you yeah. can't you can't always do that because uh, if you've seen uh, actually let me show you it's really funny if you look up Wraith Crew on Reddit you actually get this you actually get to see ooh uh, is uh, zero OCE Wait. my Twitter. I'm scared Twitter is gonna load up one day and it's gonna show like weird shit because Elon Musk is fucking annoying and yeah. it drives me insane. I have to make sure. Uh, but this is the one v three that Zero had against uh, LG, which is a triple controller team. Smile. Uh, mm -hmm. He's playing. He's, he's playing a knockdown shield. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me what the fuck that guy was doing. I don't. He like just. I don't know. <laughs> right. But they're following. They're following the the philosophy of taking space all at once here, right? Yeah. Which is not like the wrong play, but they get punished for it so extremely hard, right? Like insanely hard. And this is what, and, and this is why taking all the space at once isn't necessarily a super good idea. They just ego child it, right? They just ego fucking swung all of it, took all the space immediately, right? Um. Hmm. So in situations like this, um, it depends, right? It all it, it all depends on what's better for the situation. You'll get a good idea of how to do so. Um, by based on just like contextual playing and like understanding certain wind conditions and stuff like that, positioning and all that stuff like that. Um, hmm. This is all going to feed in the great idea of what you did wrong in this clip. I haven't gotten to that point yet, but I need to make sure you understand <laughs> these things to understand what you yeah. did wrong. Because I didn't want, because I don't want to just tell you do this instead, and you'll be like, okay, like I want you to know why. Um, yeah, yeah. But all this makes sense, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, one thing to understand is that with your uh, range. Here, specifically. You are playing it very similarly to just anchoring left and right. You are just swinging left and right here. You're strafing left and right to fight this guy, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Strafing is not just strafing people. Strafing, strafing is not just moving left and right. There's also the process of meticulously disabling opponents and what they can do. Um, so for example, if we are going, I'm going to draw a person. I'm an artist, not a coach. So don't criticize me for this too much. <laughs> Legs here, arms, hands, and head. Uh, this person, if we were if we visualize how far this or how much this person can move at all times, right? They can move to the right, to the left, forward, backward, and then diagonals, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is typically called the player sphere, or kind of this is like you you you've probably heard it in some other terms, but I'm just gonna call it player sphere for this. Uh, this, this is this is just a visualization of how the player can move uh, in, 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 in any situation, right? Now, uh, this is this same player is in an open field, right? If now if we draw a top-down view of this player and there's a wall here, this player can only move in about half oops, in about half the directions they normally would be able to, right? Because there's a wall in the way, right? They can't move. They can't move. I need to make this longer, please. They can't move uh, back, backwards diagonally, backwards, backwards diagonally again, right? They, they, because there's a wall there, right? This mm -hmm. cuts their options relatively in uh, about a third. Uh, realistically, about half once we start factoring in the fact that you exist, right? Depending on where you're positioned, you can change where the opponent is actually allowed to move to. Um, so our opponent's options are to the left, forward, to the right, and then diagonals, right? So they have about six options that they can go, right? 
uh, if we if we position ourselves, where where do you think the optimal position is for us to go? Uh, one, two, or th actually, wait. one, two, or three. Two. Why do you say that? Because then you control three spaces because they're probably not going to move towards you. Exactly. So you know they're going to move left or diagonally left. Exactly. Yes, that 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 is, that is exactly the right answer. Um, especially if we consider the um, um, movement axes, right? Because our, mm -hmm. our, opponent's, our opponent's movement axes, their movement axes is basically going to be constricted to two ways. This way, this way, or this way. And, that, and that's it, right? It's likely to be the area that has more, it's likely to be not just in this one direction. This is probably the worst way it could be, right? So if we sit on the angle two, and we draw ourselves here, our opponent, like, like you said, can't really go this way. They can, but we will just probably kill them. I don't know why we wouldn't kill them, right? Uh, they can't go this way because that's just at us. This is this is the exact same story as this one, and so the, the the opponent only has the ability to move diagonally down or to or diagonally left or left, right? Um, yeah. And because of this, we can actually manually control where this opponent goes now, right? Now this is where you mess up in this, right? You like I said, you look at this very you look at this very basic here in terms of how you fight this. You fight this mostly through strafe aim, which is like not wrong, right? But it could be better. We could uh, actually exercise mouse control and actually exercise the, the train around this opponent, right? If we actually mm. swing out from this harder here, we limit our we not only cut off our opponent here to the right, the opponent is stuck in front of us in the close range, right? We are teetering. We are really close to the aim assist range. If this guy backs up at all, we are in the aim assist range, right? It's a little bit further than where we are right now. Um, mm -hmm. And if we anchor to the right instead and cut this guy off, we can now we now control the situation, right? This this guy is backed against the fence here. He's stuck in a, he's stuck in an open area, and if we need to run, we have this building we can go to, right? This would be the far superior play compared to just strafing this person. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you see here at the end here because this guy has so much he can move in, like your mouse control, obviously you hit more shots forehead. Not a constructive way to look at the game. Right, but if you actually controlled how much space, like here, he's stuck climbing and then drops down, and you're and because of your solid target reading skills, you actually get to shoot this guy pretty well, right? However, mm -hmm. once this guy has the ability to strafe anywhere, right, you have to play very re reactively here, which is not great. Obviously, you can train your reactiveness, you can become more reactive and just one clip this guy, right? But yeah. a better player would just take control of the situation, make this guy stuck here, and then be able to cut him off in in any direction he goes to. Right, and then he just, and then then you just one clip him for free, right? Mm. And then here, yeah, so travel to his northeast, I guess. Yeah, and you then want, yeah, push him. You, you want to go to here to cut him off this way, right? And then he's yeah. stuck here, right? And then he's kind of just trapped in this little area here because now you now you can effectively control anywhere this guy goes, but for where you are right now, you can't control his left or his right, right? Because you can't. Mm. Not only is swinging to one of those directions bad because it exposes you this way. Uh, it also makes you further from the bridge as well. Um, and also, this fence here also dictates kind of like an area about where somebody can and can't go. Because um, obviously, you know, you have to climb it or it's going to body block you or whatever. Um, yeah, cut the guy off yeah. diagonally to the right here, and you're, and, you're, and you're doing great. Okay? Yeah. You can go inside to reset here. I think resetting closer to the door would be better, a little bit better, but where you reset is fine. It's not, it's not the big deal. Actually, wait, the door's wait, is the door broken. I, I don't remember the caustic broke it earlier. I think it's broken then. Then where, the, then where you reset was fine. Put really your gun. This is that is a hard fight to take, but you actually pulled it back. Not having your volt fully, re, not having a full volt mag there actually makes it really hard for you to win that because you have to swap guns. He has a wingman. But you actually apply some pretty decent dodge here, and, and the guy does not really shut on you. You only really see your feet, and his cross replacement's not good enough to actually punish you. I think I panic a little bit here. I can see that. Nice. You actually play that. It was you play that a little bit uh, sloppy, but I'm mm. to be honest with you, I could sit here and go, you should have done this faster. Blah blah blah. I think this is better acclimated to your lack of hours in the game. Things like this will get more natural to you as you play more. I'm not. I would not trust about it. I would just think about uh, your overall your overall plan. If you 
get anxious in situations like this or you get nervous at all. Mm -hmm. uh, the number one thing I want you to remember is to breathe. Okay. Um, yeah. I talked to a lot of my students about this, especially on MNK, because the, the mouse is the ultimate tool of sadness. You will get a little bit nervous, and then you uh, will miss all your shots, right? Yeah. Um, make sure you breathe. Just, make, just manually make sure you're breathing every single time you have an opportunity to reset or take a break here. Like, right here. If I start getting nervous here, because I know he's on the door here, I'm going to, like, right here, I'm going to be like, okay, am I breathing? <sighs> right, take a deep breath in, deep, deep breath out. It'll help you stabilize a lot. I remember uh, recently, one of my students was streaming. And I was and I was in their stream, and he dropped a fucking twenty bomb, but like mm -hmm. I could tell like the seventeen kill mark, he was getting like nervous and like he's getting really anxious for the last kills. I'm like, hey, you need to like remember to breathe. You remember, remember make sure to calm down. Do not get over anxious. I've thrown a lot of twenty bombs just because I get because I get nervous, right? I get anxious about it. Like yeah. I want the twenty bomb for the YouTube content or for like the badge or whatever, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Make sure you always uh, are breathing in situations like this. Always have a clear plan about how you're going to win fights. Okay. If you can't, uh, especially since you've watched all of my content, you probably know the flowchart that I do, right? Uh, for like, like winning fights. Have you seen this before? Uh, I don't think I remember it actually. Uh, so every fight can be deliberately broke down into four steps. There mm -hmm. is. Oh, actually, first step is information. Information gathering can be deliberate. It can be, hey, scan this. Hey, I'm looking for a team over here, right? It can be very deliberately. Mm -hmm. I'm getting information. Uh, however, even if there isn't, there is still information subconsciously. Uh, you can, information can be as simple as, they are coming from this way! Here's the third party, they're coming, right? Uh, it, 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 it can be as simple as that. Uh, information is also what you have, the characters you have, the resources you have. If you go, I have two nades, that is information. If you go, I am playing Horizon and I have my ultimate, that is also information, right? Um, hmm. and that, and that influences your plan. Your plan is how you're going to win a fight. Now, obviously, um, we can think about it in the micro sense, being the more finer details of, okay, I'm gonna use this box, I'm gonna leverage this box for positioning, swing from this box, hit my shots, strafe back into it. If they push me, I'm gonna do blah, 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 right? Like, we can deliberate mm -hmm. plans like that. We can also go, I'm just gonna throw nades, this guy is gonna die, right? <laughs> like, it can be as simple as yeah. that. Uh, micro, or macro-wise, we can go team fight, 3v3. We initiate using a seer key, we jump on that guy, we clean up the rest of the fight, blah, 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 all right? It, 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 mm -hmm. it can be either micro or macro, right? Now, next is the execution of said plan, right? The execution of said plan is important to uh, make sure that you that you split these two distinct categories. You can have the greatest plan in the world. You can have NRG sweet dreams plan where you're like, all right, you're gonna swing this angle, I'm gonna come to this angle, and then we're gonna, we're gonna first we're gonna run out, and blah, blah 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 blah, and then you can go in the fight and go, all right, wingman. Miss, 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 miss. All right, Oof. R9. <laughs> miss, 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 miss. Okay, you're like, okay, right? Like, what's the plan, bad? Yeah. No, you just missed every bullet, right? Like, you just didn't do, you just didn't perform well, right? On the other mm -hmm. hand, you can hit, you can hit the triple controller player team special, like the pro league teams that are triple controller, where you have the world's most awful plan ever, <laughs> but goddamn, you just one clip three people back to back. Nice respect, right? Yeah. Um, and it's important to establish between the two, which is which is better, right? Um, when you are analyzing your clips and you're analyzing yourself for a review, you should you should always come to a consensus: was my execution bad? Was the plan bad? Were both bad? Were both good? Things like that, right? You should always come to uh, understand the influence of both, right? The last yeah. step to this is the uh, something you're actually really strong in is the reset phase. Uh, resetting is really important. Resetting is not only healing. Like, duh, it's healing, right? It's three things primarily. Um, it is one, uh, heal. And healing is not only uh, armor swapping, but also like medkits if you can, things like that. Uh, but ar but armor swapping is the most crucial reset phase. Uh, there's also reloading your guns. Um, reloading your guns is, is a very underrated part of the, of the reset phase. Let me ask you, if you're on a door and you're one HP, would you rather have your gun reloaded or a bat? Your gun, probably, right? Because you you can't yeah. kill people with no ammo. You can kill people yeah. on one HP, right? You can easily one clip the guy as he, as he double kick your door, but you cannot kill the guy with no with no bullets in your gun, right? Uh, hmm. So in most situations, reloading is preferred above healing, but there are times where you just need to live, and, and there's times where you just need to live through like a bunch of teams shooting you or like a lot of attention on you. You just drop the bat instead, right? Um, yeah, it's very context dependent, but typically reloading is above healing, and then the last step is positioning. I'm sure right. P O this is typically positioning. Um but is it, when we go to reset, we want to we want to take an advantageous position in, in some way if we can. We want to look to see 
if like there's a third party coming we want to see if our rotation's clear we want to see like x and y right this hmm. feeds into information right uh if i go in the firing range and i just show you i'm gonna ask you a question um the new bright skin is so good i love it it's it's actually really really good i'm, I'm i didn't think i would like it as much as i do yeah, um, same here. When I saw the original leaked stuff, but then in game, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I love the, like the arms. And the blue is really nice. But e. what what can I see here? The ground, right? Like nothing, right? Like it's hard to name something that I can see, right? Yeah. But what, what, what do I see here? Everything, right? Too. There's too much. To, yeah. There's too much to name, right? This is the whole consensus as to why high ground is good. For example. Let's say we are fighting in um, in this building, right? Let's say let let's say we fight in this building and and we wipe the team. Let's say me and my teammate are alive, uh, but what but what, one of my teammates is down, right? And then my teammate goes to res them, right? So I am gonna so I'm going to reset, I'm going to reload my guns, I'm going to slide through the window here. I'm going to start popping my med kit or my bat or whatever I want to do to heal. While looking out, right? I'm looking out for more information on more teams where people might be. I could even maybe, depending on, on the environment, depending on what things are, how things are going, I could even come to the roof up here and look around, right? This is a good position for resetting, right? Because not only not only do I already have a default strong position to take, but uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I can look around, I can reset up here, everything's fine, right? And then it flows back into the information phase, repeat ad nauseum, right? Go again yeah. and again and again, right? Uh, you can break down every team fight like this, every macro, every micro. If you're trying to 1v3 or you're trying to 1v2, uh, you break down every 1v2 like this. You go information, plan, how do you isolate a 1v2? How do you, or, or how do you fight, or sorry, how do you isolate a 1v1? How do you fight a 1v1 against somebody in like 1v2? Execution is, you know, hitting your shots, reset. You always want to reset after you knock somebody if you can. Obviously you can't always, but you can, re uh, sometimes you'll have to skip the heal. Uh, you can't really skip the reload, to be honest with you. Uh, and sometimes you sometimes you can skip the positioning because you can't really do anything about it. But if you still want to, try opting for these things is is better, okay? Yeah. Does that, does that make sense here? Yeah, it makes sense. So in these 1v1 situations like that, uh, you play really... I wouldn't say scared. It's more so you play really reactively here. But instead of playing reactively, you want to set the opponents up in your grasp to win this, right? You want to try and understand the win conditions for how you can play these things you can do to, to, to win this, right? Because this race swings you, you're like, what the fuck, right? Right. Yeah. You get like it, like like I can tell you're visibly like shaken by it, which is like understandable. Why the fuck is she swinging you, right? Um, but understanding just just how to win fights in general is going to make your like overall not only anxiousness calm down, but also like your control over a situation. Mm -hmm. But knowing how to win fights makes it so much easier to actually win fights. Wingman moves in. The wide wide angle tracking. It's clicking, but whatever. You are under aiming a, a little bit there. Obviously, it's not like the end of the world, but just you are uh, yeah. under aiming a little bit on the wide angle tracking. I want to see you destroy these guys with the wingman, please. You're playing a little bit cautiously here. God damn, they're throwing those up. Yep. The knife fall off. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I see you didn't mean to do that, it, but it happens. Not really how you want to use the horizon, but like, it's fine. Yeah, it was a bit of a panic. Uh, yeah, this fall was obviously a little oof, right? But uh, the important, uh, the, num the number one thing I want you to understand here is that there's two things. One, there's the idea of spacing. Like I said earlier, we want to enable ourselves and also disable our opponents. Um, when it comes here, you didn't really use your weapon. Like the wingman is strong in every range, right? 
but it's not mm. consistently strong in every range, right? Like, obviously, you can out snipe charge rifles, right? But however, yeah. you can also um, not. You can also die to the charge rifle guy. <laughs> you get, uh, in, in, a, in a range like this, this guy's a PK. You could, like, out trade the PK guy. But you also could not, right? Like, you want to use the weapon yeah. that's more consistently better for the range, right? Like, for example, I'll be playing against. Uh, other, you want to. Like, this ties again the whole thing where you want to disable your opponents, right? Both your weapons are strong in the same range. You want to use the weapon that's equally as good as their weapon in the same range, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, here, as soon as the guy takes the lift, right? You can shoot these shots, and then right here, I'm swapping to the PK. Right here, I would not want. I don't want to use the rest of my wingman mag. I just want to use the PK here to match this guy, right? To go, to go, to go shot for shot with this guy. Especially because you miss, you know, that, that one shot. Like, 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 you pull out the PK, like, like one second too late here. And it really sucks. But, uh, the other thing you want to focus on here is more so kiting. You, if, you, even if, if you go bar for bar, right? If you go damage for damage with this guy, you lose. Be, yeah. ju just because there's two of them, right? You want to more deliberately take fights when you have an advantage to push over them. Uh, I'm sure you, you might have seen me talk about this in, in, in a session with students before. Um, but the way a typical the way a fight typically breaks out or the way fights typically manifest is that you gain an opponent you gain an advantage over an opponent through some way through positioning health grenades whatever right like some way you gain an advantage over them and you typically leverage that advantage to kill them right here hmm. there is no advantage at all we're playing very off the book um, i l let's fight right but no one in this game plays the game fucking fair and that's why you die here because it's a 1v2 it's not fair at all right it's it's one v two. They're they're playing the game like I mean I, like I guess how they're supposed to. You know they're running around with, with their teammate. You know and they're gonna, yeah. and they're gonna swing you. Right? You need to uh you need more space and time here. You can't really win fights like this. Obviously if you hit every bullet you shit on these guys right. But you are not you yourself are not comfortable enough a player to do so. And that, that's a mixture of uh like I would say more fine aim mechanics and more fine like spacing mechanics and stuff like that. But there are things you'll get more mm -hmm. with time. I wouldn't like sit here and be like deliberately. Your aim is bad for X and Y. Like you don't have a lot of time in the game. I'll be honest with you. A thousand hours might seem like a lot. It is not. I have like five thousand in this game, right? Yeah. <laughs> I and I still have a lot I can improve on. Most most players, uh, like uh, do you have any players you look up to in the game? Uh, maybe Monday. Monday? Oh, that guy. That guy has so many hours in this fucking game. Yeah, I think last time I heard he said like at almost ten k. I, I yeah I, I was gonna guess nine k to eleven k. You have a command. People were fishing in his offline chat. You have an hours command? I guess not. But yeah, I would guess like nine to eleven k hours in, in this game. Um, yeah, I think that's last time he mentioned it was in that area at least. Yeah. Um. Right, and you have one tenth of that. But legitimately speaking, from where I can see a lot of your skills at, you actually are a lot more ahead of where most people are for the time period in terms of hours played. And that's really impressive. I like, I like. You're probably the first student I've seen that has really been like that, right? Um, mm -hmm. With with some more proper guidance and stuff like that, you can blossom. You can blossom really ahead of players, especially for. I don't know how old you are. How old are you? Uh, Twenty six. 26 yeah you i don't I'll, I'll be honest if you in esports career is probably a little bit out of reach because you're a little bit older you probably have things, <laughs> yeah. you probably have like i don't know responsibilities office jobs <laughs> yeah uh yeah, yeah most see the thing like most like you could get in esports but like you probably have like i don't know another job that stops you Mo the reason yeah. esports is really good for young people because they don't have jobs they can just do whatever, they can just fucking do whatever they want right just jerk off and yeah. be fine right but like but like your mechanics are like are like not that bad at all uh, but if this comes down more to more. You need to understand that fights aren't going to be fair. Fights will almost never be fair. Uh, you can mm -hmm. just pull like a Mandy or a Hollow O and just fucking shit shit on these guys really badly. But the chances of that happening, not quite within your grasp yet, right? You have to like hey, wingman headshot, wingman headshot, and then like the other guy, the wingman headshot, like PK pump, and then it's like the cleanest clip ever. That's a Twitter clip that I would retweet. Mm. Um, but uh, you need to look to kite. You, you need to look to kite and space enemies out more. Okay. Uh, in, in, in a situation like this, if they're going to ape you down like this, especially because you make a mistake like dropping down, which sucks, obviously, right? That that, that mm -hmm. mistake happens, but it it happens. Don't don't be too hard on yourself for it. Right? Um, but uh, in, in situations like this, where people are aping you down, just kite and kite and try to make more space. Things like doors, hallways, things like that are really good for you to do. Okay. Yep.
You also look to land a little safe. Uh, yeah, I often land in Fragment. I usually land the no-name and leave like two buildings and try to run. Yeah. I don't think it's like the... Obviously, to be honest with you, it is the safer, more, more consistent play to do. But you do miss out on, I would say, probably three to four kills. Because obviously, off drop, you fight like hot, hot drop, right? You either get PK pumped or you PK pump somebody and kill them, right? <laughs> like I, like yeah. I, I, I was coaching one of my students and they were in silver, and they like landed on a PK off drop in like a rank in like a silver rank game, and they just got seven kills. I'm like, yeah, you just kind of had a PK and just kind of ran at people and they just kind of died, right? Like sometimes yeah. you're that person. Sometimes you get PK'd and die and that's it, right? If you're looking for consistent games, what you're doing is okay, but you have to understand that your highs are going to be a lot lower and your lows are going to be a lot higher, right? Yeah. Uh, and and it's it's up to you and your playstyle about what you want to do. Uh, personally, I think it's nicer. I think it hits nicer clips and stuff like that if you just go for if you just land hotter. But you know, yeah. that's my own personal opinion. It, 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 it is up to you. I'm presenting this demo to you so you can think about it and think about what you want to do. Either way, I think it's fine. There's no right way to play the game. Uh, but especially as you get better with your mechanics, you can afford to drop hotter and hotter because if you land on a fucking P20, you can one clip somebody, right? But yeah. you, you, but you will still die to the level twelve lifeline with the PK. But, yeah, know. I died to a level one uh, console player today, and that was uh, an humbling. experience. Humbling, huh? You, just, yeah. you feel like the worst player in the game, and then you, and then you remember that uh, there's some skill flattening mechanics in this game. Yeah, I'm not gonna name any uh, of them, but there are some. <laughs> I'm sure we all have one in mind. I'm sure we can all think of one. Nope. This yes. is super awkward. They just chilled in that building, and I leave. Uh, we don't really fight anymore. Okay. From what I remember. Okay. Cool. I guess. I agree. Cool. Yeah. It was just... I tried to poke a little bit, but it was just awkward. So I just left. Why should I pick up the Nemesis? Are you like a kicking chat that just doesn't pick it up? Or like... I just don't like the gun. <laughs> okay, so I know it's chat. good, but it's... I don't know. A giga chat. That's fine. I respect. The res here is everyone like that. Mm -hmm. You land a... You land like way too safe in this game. I will say though, you uh, you have to fight one team and you have one kill and 170 damage when there's 14 teams left. Like this game is, I'm not gonna lie to you, this game has no potential to be anything, like super yeah. like record breaking, right? Um, you should in, in, in games like this. I didn't get to see your drop. You didn't, I didn't get to see your like your exact drop because you cut it out. Um, yeah. And in the future, I would like to see them if they are helpful. Yeah, I just forgot to record. Oh uh, yeah, that's press fine. the record button. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, but, uh, I would recommend, uh, landing, like, 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 like a smidgen hotter, like a little bit smidgen hotter, and you, like, uh, yeah. in Fragment, go land, like, apartments or something, go, go land, like, to a building, like, directly next to it, that, good, I mean, that guy, sure, that guy was standing still, but, like, good aim, like, like, actually good fundamentals, you can laugh at me and say that, say that guy was standing still, but, like, you have decent stability, I don't, I, I don't think uh, I want that doesn't guy. have a recoil, I feel yeah. sometimes. Good shots there. You just slide on this guy? Yep. Guy is... What, what, what is this guy doing? You get here. shot by another team. <laughs> and you guys were running in circles. Your aim was... That's fucking... That's the we'll take benchmarks for you, baby. It's there. Very nice. <laughs> and then I fall off again. <laughs> you are really good at doing that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you, sh you should try not falling off. Have you, have you considered that? Yeah, it would probably be a bit better. <laughs> I notice a lot of the time you're, mm -hmm. uh, you mostly just shoot people with guns, which like sounds like a good thing. And honestly, I say it like half in jest. But uh, you don't use your you, you don't use your, your util a lot in all these fights. You don't use your abilities a lot, and that can come down to the fact that you should have jumped here. Jumping is typically bad. Jumping is not bad here at all. Uh, your your peaking fundamentals are, are bad here. I'll talk to you about that, about that in a second. Let me finish this first thought. Um, the uh, you don't you don't use your, your, your util a lot. You just people with guns, and like that's fine, mm -hmm. right? Like, but Apex Legends is a hero shooter. You should use your hero abilities to, to to help you fight people, right? Uh, you should yeah. also use your grenades and shit like that. They're really good. You should uh, you should pick up more grenades. I'll be honest with you. 
And I know you're playing Horizon and you can pick up nades for your role. I'm, if I watch you not play Horizon, I almost guarantee you, you, you don't pick up nades. I pick up like one nade, maybe. You, you need more. Max. You need more. You need more nades. Right? Because one nade, yeah. one nade can win a 1v3. Imagine you sky nade, drop, drop a triple 100 banger, right? Do 1v3, mm -hmm. and, then, and then that's a 1v3 able fight. You need enough one nade, right? Compared to, imagine, like, like imagine the impact of 60 ammo inventory versus one frag grenade. Obviously, the frag grenade cannot get a lot of value, but you have to be, you have to be very deliberate with how you use your grenades. You should go, you should go, this grenade serves this purpose. And the purpose can be, like, in quote unquote invisible one, where it's like to cut off an angle, like, right? Like, 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 like if you throw a nade, like, at a doorway, they're not gonna, like, die to the nade, obviously. It's not gonna do damage, right? But it's gonna stop them from peeking, right? Let you walk mm -hmm. up. Also, you can also throw nades for damage. You can also be like, hey, Sky Nade, hey, it's taking your star, hey, cutting off your angle, stuff like that, right? Um, every grenade has a purpose. It's, instead of instead of deliberately listing all of them, it's up to you to kind of figure out how to use them in, in the fight and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. And overall, with util and stuff like that, I recommend you do that. This is also not really surprising considering your, your playtime in the game, uh, especially because you have aim trained a good bit. Um, your aim is really not the problem at all. Your aim is pretty solid, as I'm not surprised at all. Uh, you should focus more. You should focus a lot more on your utility usage, okay? And how you yeah. actually use utility to win fights. Utility will help you overcome disadvantages, right? Like, like how I said earlier, every fight wants to be won through advantages by pushing advantages on people. Um, obviously, not every, not every fight you'll you'll not have an advantage every fight. You have to, the opponents will have high ground. The opponents will have more utter armor. The opponents will be out. You'll be outnumbered. Things like that, right? And you use this is where your things like utility come in, like your. Uh, abilities, your ultimate, your your grenades, things like that, right? That's that's where all that comes in, okay? Yep. Um, they all have deliberate uses, like if like if they're on high ground, Horizon Q, right? Things like that. Uh, again, I'm not going to meticulously list everything, but you can come up with it as you kind of play more. You can think about it. If you have if you have direct questions about how is X, X or Y ability should be used, uh, you can always ask. Mm -hmm. me. Uh, I typically can you know outline some stuff. Um, the other thing that comes here, your peaking fundamentals are bad here. Obviously, this platform fucking sucks to fight on because you can't strafe it all, right? Yeah. It does it just flat awkward. out suck. I have to. It just. It does just flat out suck. I'll be honest here, right? Um, but our goal, right? If we, you know, I'm not gonna read all this full thing again. But if we draw this thing again, right, with our point and their line of sight and blah 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 blah, right? Our main mm. goal with strafing is to avoid this, uh, their vision cone, right? The whole mm -hmm. thing we want to do is avoid their crosshair. It's the whole thing we're trying to avoid, right? So when we're peeking, right? The fundamentals of peeking went down to the fact that we want to avoid our opponent's crosshair, okay? So if we peek a corner, grab a gun, or highlight this. Oh. There we go. If I, uh, if, 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 if I know there's an opponent behind the wall here, where am I, where, where am I putting my crosshair? Right here, right? Because uh, if, yeah. if I put it here, if they slow peek me like this, right? They peek me like this. They walk in my crosshair, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if they slide out like this, I have, I have a decent chance of being able to like to, to you know track them and shoot them. Obviously, if someone slides out like that, it's way oops, it's way harder to hit them if they slide out and do this, right? Because I have to actually rely on mouse control and strafing here to actually be able to hit them, right? Um, mm -hmm. But so when you so when you're peeking a corner like this, especially again, especially when you're low HP, it's really important that you try and be un unpredictable. Like I said, a jump here, like this, would have been fine. Like jumping is bad most of the time. A jump like this, jumping, the reason why jumping is bad is because jumping is predictable, right? But if they have no information to predict it, they, there's no prediction to be had, right? There's no way that they that they can predict you if they can't really see you, right? Uh, you're, not really, you're not really in a situation to do like a wall bounce like this. You can't really do something like this because of the terrain around like that whole like, yeah, circle thing, geometry. right? Yeah, Um, but, but if, if the opponent knows you're right there, you need to do something to spice it up to try and, try and wear their crosshair, right? Obviously, I'm not saying you're gonna live and like style on this guy if you like slide it like this, right? But that's kind of your only mm -hmm. option, right? Rather than like doing a slow peek right like this, you just die if you do a slow peek like this, no matter what, right? You have to hit every shot on this guy has to be absolutely fucking balls, right? This guy has to be really bad to, to not kill you if you slow peek like that, right? So you mm -hmm. you can only do like a tap strafe like this around the corner, trying like get you can like get in his face or or even then you can literally just run back like this, you know, run, run back from the cover or even like drop down from height, right? You you have a lot more options rather than just dry peeking it like this, right? This is like the worst way to peek things. The only, only, only time you want to peek something like this is if there's like several like the proper way to peek is to wide swing from an angle like this and then strafe back into cover like this, right? This is this is the proper way to peek. Uh, the the only time you don't really want to do this is if there's multiple enemies or you're gonna get like firefighted by a bunch of people, right? 
Like, if there's, like, a full team of three right here, I'm not going, hey, full team of three. <laughs> right? Like, I'm just gonna die, right? I go... Yeah, yeah. Right, and that and that and that's the only time it's really like like like, like not acceptable to do, right? Um, hmm. but I encourage you to to to, to hard swing things a lot better, okay? Yeah. Um, so more hard swinging from cover. Yeah, and it's, not slow pick. Yeah, especially when you're low on health. Especially when you're low on health. Uh, I've had, I mean, I like I said earlier, I one v one uh my controller player like friend a lot, I can get better, and uh hmm. there's times where they uh have me at one at one HP, right? Like, I'll be right here against the wall, and they'll be up here against the, uh, thing, and they'll swing me, and I, like, counter-swing them, and do, a, and do just a straight one clip, and I'm like, hey, they're like, you are the worst, you suck, and I'm like, hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, but, like, it's better to, to counter-swing, or, like, to counter-swing and or wide-swing, rather than just, just kind of sit here and be like, hey, kill me, right, because I'm just asking you to die if I'm just sitting in place, right? Yeah. Especially, especially because if you wide swing, you also have more options about where you can strafe too, right? If we if we mention that uh, player, the, the player like dome sphere, right, where a player can strafe in any of the eight directions, right? If you are peeking a corner like this, right, your sphere is like this, you are probably going to just strafe like that, right, back into cover. It's really it's really easy to read, but read you want what you're going to do. If the if the enemy opponent has a brain, they just wide strafe like this, right? Cut you off the angle more. Make sense? Yeah. Uh, and if you, yeah, and if you wide swing, your player dome is overall something. Actually, the full eight directions. Um, all that makes sense. Yeah. Do you have any questions about anything? Um. We went over. No, I think you explained it pretty well. We went over quite a lot of like fundamentals in terms of like um, advanced strafing, uh, basic peeking, and stuff like that. Just kind of some more tangible mechanics to go on. Um, yeah. And we were. Quite a lot for you to like practice again this, this one wasn't super cohesive in terms of like one mechanic but there were just a lot of fundamental mechanics to cover so yeah um but so if you don't have any questions i think i'm pretty comfortable with letting you go there because nice. we went over quite a bit and you went over uh quite a lot and you have a lot to go over um yeah <laughs> i have a lot to think about <laughs> yeah it's uh, especially a lot about the strafe stuff since you mm. have a good mirror anti-mirror kind of autonomy in your brain about what about doing it, make sure that you remember to follow the three rules of when to do it. Um, mm -hmm. Having an opponent's angle is like one of the best ways to start shooting them first. Uh, you'll see that if I stray fame a lot in one of you ones, you'll see that I am always like, like I like like I'll slide jump around somebody in a circle, ha be at their back, and then and then just start doing them. Right? Things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you can follow the same logic as well. It's being able to shoot first is a lot more complicated than just shooting first, right? Having somebody's yeah. angle, being behind them, being to their side. Being not in their view cone basically guarantees that you shoot first, right? Um, yeah. And re remember the deliberate spacing I talked about earlier as well? Stay out of the controller. Mm -hmm. Aim assist range. Try and play in your range to enable yourself, but also disable your opponent, okay? Enabling yourself is easy. Disabling your opponent is a lot harder. It requires a lot more thought, okay? Um, I'm just going to write that to control the part down before I forget that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, take a note of that to your monitor. And every time you go in a fight, look at it and go, ah, 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 control range, get out of it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have written at least three post-it notes to hang up now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, assuming that is uh, everything, uh, I will I will let you go then. Nice. Thank you very much. No, no problem at all. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I look forward. You booked another session in like, right, I think. Yeah, I think two weeks from now. Yeah, I will. will we, we will go over some more stuff then. Uh, I have some more. I already have a plan for what I'm gonna do. <clears throat> nice. Um, I'm just get another vod for me for for then. And yeah, I um for the vod is there like a best way to like or type of things you want me to record extra of like hotting landing hot and taking more fights or yeah that would be fine uh if you yeah. could include the dropship I know obviously you said you didn't record you didn't have the part because you forgot to record it but if you could include the yeah. dropship that'd be awesome uh will do yeah, literally just turn on your recording software for an hour and then just play the game and then send me that whole like hour long thing and that's fine. Uh, I, okay. I, because I can just skip through all, all the dead parts. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, try and land a little bit more hot. You are missing out on some kills because you land a little bit too safe. Be a little mm. bit more, like, aggressive in, in how you land. Um, and uh, you can send me, if you have specific clips, those are really good, too, to review. Like, if you have clips where, like, hey, I, hey, I don't know how I could have strafed better here. Or if, like, your clips are like, hey, I don't know what I did wrong here. Things like that, right? Um mm. Things like that are really good, but obviously they're not. They, they don't come along like a lot, so it it, it yeah. is up to you.
Uh, but yeah, just hour of like raw like pub gameplay or or whatever mode you prefer. Uh, you should play a lot of pubs, probably just pubs. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 that's about it. Nice.